This is a Nightline Friday Night Special. In the beginning, the police seemed to have the evidence. The death was obviously the result of a criminal act. Did you say anything about the rounds today? And while the nation watched, the police chief was publicly confident. Older Police Department has this investigation well in hand. But five months later, the investigation is in shambles. The killer may never be caught. And even if someone is indicted, the chances of a conviction are slim. They kicked the feds literally out of the Ramsey's home on the 26th, tell them to take a walk. Now they've had to go and get them and say, please come back in. But it seems to be a little late. Everybody has a right to be disappointed, including the citizens of Boulder, the Ramsey family, and America who wants professional police work on a day-by-day -day basis. Tonight, case not closed, the cost of bungling the evidence. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. The murder of any six-year-old would have shocked us, but JonBenet Ramsey was no ordinary six-year-old. She had been trained and rehearsed and packaged. She'd been photographed and videotaped in such a way as to convey the image of a pint-sized sex kitten. When she posed, the eyes already had sort of a world weariness about them. She seemed much too old to be six. So that got our attention in a way that the murder of any other kindergartner simply would not have done. The investigators who first arrived at the crime scene the day after Christmas last year found no signs of forced entry. Even stranger, there was snow around the house, but no footprints. There was a two and a half page handwritten ransom note found by the mother. The body was found in the house eight and a half hours later by the father. The Boulder, Colorado police found themselves caught between a rock and a hard place. The Ramsey family has lots of political connections. The press corps was huge and ravenous. The safest course of action seemed to be just clamming up. The police said nothing, except that they were on top of it. Now, five months later, that appears to have been nothing more than posturing. As Tom Foreman reports, no one in Boulder these days appears ready to believe anymore that their police department is on top of this investigation. The outrage should be just unbelievable again this morning. You stay right here at 7.59, a minute to 8. This is 6.30, KHOW in Denver. The police are not speaking about it. It's a dirty, stinking little secret. Neither are city officials. And I think it's coming to, to the head right now. What but every morning, talk died? radio is alive with accusations that after five months, leads in the Ramsey murder case have slowed to a crawl and the investigation is going nowhere fast. It is a single homicide. What is the matter with these people? They should be ashamed of themselves. I agree, absolutely. The ratings for Peter Boyle's show are the highest they have ever been, and they keep going up as every day he takes the bolder cops to task. The waiting's over. They have whatever, they have all the evidence that they're ever going to have. It's in their hands right now. If they were going to file a case, they would have done it. I want to believe in my heart that there will be an arrest. My brain tells me there never will be an arrest. And he is not alone. The police messed up so much evidence that we'll never be able to calculate how much damage they did. Larry Posner is with the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. You can't explain the police conduct the first day. It doesn't fit with any way to investigate a case. They're told there's at least a kidnapping of a human being, and they don't search the house themselves, they don't seal it off, they don't preserve it. Indeed, law enforcement sources tell ABC News little was done initially to preserve the crime scene. For example, two investigators who were present in the house early in the investigation independently say when the girl's body was lying on the floor after being carried upstairs by her father, they saw something on her stomach. One says it was clearly a drop of fluid. When a Boulder officer, apparently disturbed by so many people staring at the body, decided to cover it with a sheet, she was warned not to for fear of destroying the drop. 
but she proceeded anyway. And that drop of fluid never made it to state police labs for analysis. Throwing a sheet over a body or a blanket over a body or whatever it is, is commonly done. It should not be done. Dr. Peter DeForest is a forensic scientist who teaches at the John Jay College of Criminal Law. This does run the risk of compromising trace evidence. It runs the risk of uh, obliterating or modifying bloodstain patterns that can be utilized later on. In another incident that same day, two other investigators say a patrol officer inside the house found a large flashlight and suggested it should be bagged as evidence. But senior officers dismissed the idea. Later, an autopsy revealed that the girl's skull had been fractured by a blunt instrument, possibly a flashlight. But by then, the flashlight in question was nowhere to be found in the evidence at the state labs. There was apparently so little regard early on for collecting and protecting forensic evidence that sources inside the investigation say there was serious talk of turning the crime scene, the house, back over to the family less than 12 hours after the body had been found. Reportedly, it was only after the district attorney's office objected that the police launched an eight-day search of the property which netted truckloads of potential evidence. The parents are going to go through a, a tremendous grieving process, we expect, and we're going to have to work our interviews and those kinds of things around that. Publicly, Chief Detective John Eller was there saying was no everything was under control, but some people who were meeting with police in private too. would soon have doubts. They seemed surprised and a little embarrassed and, you know, trying to come up with excuses. Pam Griffin made pageant gowns for Jean Bonnet. Police questioned her, but a few weeks later, they were back to redo the interview. They had lost the first one. First thing that went through my mind is if they have lost that which is not important could they have lost anything more important and i don't you know i i hope not many officers assigned to the case were trying to go by the book but sources say time and again egos and small town politics intruded we are conducting interviews of friends family and associates of the ramses Sergeant Larry Mason, one of the department's most experienced homicide investigators, took a team of officers to the Ramsey's old neighborhood in Georgia. But within days, he was removed from the case, accused of compromising the investigation by talking to the media. The city's own investigation later found those accusations to be false. And numerous law enforcement sources have since said Mason was removed because he put too much pressure on the Ramseys and they complained. We know where we're headed. We know this case is going to be solved. We know it. The district attorney and police chief have steadily refused to discuss any of these apparent problems, saying they do not want to give information to potential suspects. But as the months have gone by, with no sign of an arrest, the questions about what happened in this house have only grown. While Boulder officials say they don't want to reveal any information to potential suspects, investigators may have inadvertently given them something even more valuable, a ready-made defense. Part two of Tom Foreman's report, when we come back. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer. Touring Coupe with the 300 horsepower North Star system. Isn't it time you live without limits? Go for the gold. The new Rebel G. Get the ultimate rush. Terrific. How do you feel? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Overwhelmed. <laughs> we sure surprised Mrs. Reeser. And we may surprise you next with the $11 million grand prize in the American Family Sweepstakes. Personally delivered into your hands. Sunday on This Week, will President Clinton and Paula Jones go to court? We'll have both their lawyers. Plus, the latest on the Oklahoma City bombing trial. Sunday. 
Just Repeat presents the most amazing inline skate offer of the year. The Rollerblade Pro 3500. Now incredibly only $59.99. The Rollerblade Bravo GL. Now it's only $99.99. And the Ultra Wheels Ultra Extreme. Six slices and dices. Just look what it does to this tomato. Now only $99.99. But wait, there's more. Act now and you'll receive a Hyper Walk and an extra set of wheels all for only $99.99. Offer not available at just any store. It's at Just Repeat where the 13th pair is free. Store operators are standing by. When news breaks. We now go live to the scene of the investigation. See it live on News 2. News 2. First in the scene of breaking news. First with live coverage. First with a story. News 2. Bringing you complete coverage of all the day's news. Plus, keeping you ahead of severe weather with the exclusive Storm Tracker 2000. When news breaks, see it live on News 2, where coverage comes first every day. hired lawyers, private investigators, and a public relations firm to help face rising speculation that they might be involved in their daughter's death, Police Chief Tom Kobe was also talking about outside help. Boulder Police Department has this investigation well in hand. In a carefully controlled news conference, Kobe admitted that he had never before conducted a murder investigation. Still, he said, his department could rely on others. We are not working on this investigation alone. When we have needed assistance, we have reached out to those who could help, who could provide that help. But in the critical early days, Boulder police were turning down offers of help from law enforcement agencies far more experienced in murder investigations, from the state police to the FBI. That surprised Craig Silverman, a former Denver district attorney. The Denver police chief volunteered the help of the Denver Police Department right away. And Denver Police has an excellent homicide unit. That offer was refused. They kicked the feds literally out of the Ramsey's home on the 26th, tell them to take a walk. Now they've had to go and get them and say, please come back in. But it seems to be a little late. Boulder Police were not even listening to their own district attorney, the man who would have to prosecute the case. At one public meeting, an assistant DA said his office was trying to advise the police on how to build a better case, only to be largely ignored. He told a county commissioner, well, I'm not going to criticize the Boulder Police Department, but I'd sure like to. I can tick off half a dozen instances where they are being legally advised to do something, and with a lot of pressure they do it. But if they hadn't had that legal advice, there could really be dire consequences. In the end, the successful prosecution of the murderer of this child is all we want. The district attorney finally formed a blue ribbon prosecution team, including noted forensic scientist Dr. Henry Lee and attorney Barry Sheck, both of whom played roles in the O.J. Simpson trial. But by then, many critics were saying it was too late. You can bring in all the experts on earth and it won't make a clue be there that was missing. It won't make a good crime scene out of a contaminated crime scene. Experts can only analyze what you saved, what you preserved. If it's not there, they can hire all the people on earth. It won't be there. Then, two weeks ago, another misstep. The Ramsey family ran an ad asking for a call from, quote, anyone with information concerning an adult male approaching young children in Boulder. At first, city officials suggested the ad was unfairly spreading fear of a random killer. Then the DA's office revealed it approved the ad. That raises the real possibility that if either of the Ramseys was ever charged, a jury could find their defense in the prosecutor's own actions. They've conceded that as of the middle of May, they had serious suspicions about somebody else doing it. And if all the evidence is in right now, and there isn't a whole lot more evidence, they're going to say, Holy cow, the Boulder DA had doubts. You have to have doubts, ladies and gentlemen. In terms of trial tactics, it, it was a major blunder. 
The way Boulder officials have treated the Ramsey family has been a puzzle from the start. One moment behaving as if they are the only logical suspects, spurring public speculation that they are getting away with murder. Then, in the next instant, giving the family an inside look at the case. Officials even gave them a copy of the ransom note, while simultaneously asking them for handwriting samples to see if they wrote it. They were given, their attorneys were given a Xerox copy of the handwriting note. Boulder officials say that's not unusual. Well, maybe not in Boulder, but in the rest of the world, we don't give over evidence to somebody who is a suspect. Many police officers say with no known eyewitnesses and a killer who apparently tried to clean up any evidence, finding and charging someone with this murder could have been difficult, even if police did everything right. But the fact of the matter is, it wasn't done right. It hasn't been done right and still isn't being done right. And to further undermine public confidence in the police, earlier this month, they tried to crack down on underage drinking near the University of Colorado. Rioting erupted, police were injured, and residents were outraged. When afterward, the chief said, my officers would have been justified in killing some of those young people. On Wednesday, May 28th, the ballots were tabulated in regards to the vote of no confidence for Chief Tom Kobe. The riots were the last straw for some officers. The force voted more than two to one to express no confidence in the chief. There were 115 ballots issued, 78 votes in favor of no confidence, 31 votes opposed to a no confidence statement, and six abstentions. But this week, city officials were still defending him. I've worked with a number of police chiefs, and this is the finest police chief I have ever worked with. Officially, Boulder police still will not talk about the Ramsey case. They say there is too much sensitive information. On the other hand, we all try to protect our butts. And if they're embarrassed about how it's going, I wouldn't expect them to announce it. This is about covering the rear ends of all of these people involved in this screw up. In the end, many people inside and outside the Boulder Police Department say it should have never come to this. But the fact remains. A six-year-old girl was brutally killed in her own home, and her killer or killers are still on the streets. For Nightline, this is Tom Foreman in Boulder. When we come back, the one Boulder City official who will talk and a columnist who has followed the story from the beginning. The usual trim, Mr. B? Yeah, and toss in a plan to get my networks running like those cars, Stan. <laughs> no problem. Got to transform your disparate legacy networks into an integrated multimedia asynchronous transfer mode. IP or frame relay Nortel power network. Like they did at Indy this year. It can increase performance, increase flexibility, increase business. Amen, Bridge. Nortel introduces power networks designed to move business at the speed of Indy. Mean you don't have a power network? Break down like you? If you've been contemplating a move to Park Avenue, there's never been a better time. The Park Avenue by Buick, completely redesigned for 1997. Now, whether you buy or lease, Park Avenue is more inviting than ever. Take advantage of this cash offer or lease Park Avenue at this graciously accommodating monthly payment. Never has a move to Park Avenue looked so promising. Park Avenue by Buick, the power of understatement. Clinton just happens to be president, and Arianna Huffington, Norm Macdonald, Kidd, and Paul Theroux just happen to be talking about Paula Jones. Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, coming up on ABC Late Night. I'm Cy Sperling, president of the Hair Club for Men. If you have thinning hair, this new technology book is something you should have, and I'll see that you get it free if you call this toll-free number now. Because I'm a hairstylist, people are always asking me what they can do about their thinning hair. And I never had any answers for them until my husband had his hair done at the Hair Club for Men. And Bob tried Minoxidil and a couple of the other products, but nothing worked for him until he went to the Hair Club for Men. It really feels like my own hair. Nothing felt right for me until I got involved with the Hair Club for Men. And whether Bob's washing his hair, styling his hair, or even if I'm running my fingers through it, it looks and feels like his own hair. So make sure you call Hair Club for Men now for your free booklet. You'll see other men like yourself who are already experiencing the benefits of Hair Club's non-surgical procedure. So call now for your free booklet, and remember, it's mailed in a confidential envelope. And by the way, I'm not only the Hair Club president, but I'm also a client. 
John Ward. Sterling Marlin. What are you doing here? Well, I'm considering a racing career. I've got the car. Right now, I'm looking for some hard-to-find parts. Are you sure? Don't miss the Advance Auto Parts Race into Spring Sale. STP Super Fuel Injector Cleaner. Just $5.98. Hamilton Conventional Weight Motor Oil. Just 77 cents a quart. Don't miss the Race into Spring Sale going on now. Well, here she is. I don't know about this... Joining us now from Denver, Bob Greenlee has been a member of the Boulder City Council for the past 14 years. Chuck Green is a columnist for the Denver Post. He joins us from Denver also. Uh, Mr. Greenlee, for the first couple of months, I suppose it, it made good sense that the, that the police department, uh, the prosecutors and so on, did not want to talk, did not want to answer questions from the press. It is now beginning to look a little bit, though, after five months and after no apparent progress has been made, uh, as though it has more to do with embarrassment than good practice. What do you think? Ted, I don't believe so. I, you know, th this is still an ongoing investigation. It's an ongoing active investigation. Oh, some 13,000 pages and documents, hundreds and hundreds of leads and so forth that are being followed up. I really believe that we have got to continue to have some patience. But the, the piece that you had was very critical of, of the department. And later on, if it is determined that uh, the, the mistakes were made, I think the community uh, needs to know that. And Mr. Green has asked for a po possible investigation into those, those allegations. I would certainly support him in that. We need to know if mistakes were made. Except that you're on the city council, and, and doesn't there come a point when you have to say, I mean, I, I don't care how many pages, how many documents, how many interviews have been done. The fact of the matter is they're five months into the investigation, and they haven't got a clue who did it. Now, at some point or another, doesn't the city council say, guys, if you don't know how to do it, get out of the way and let someone who does get in there? Well, I, th I think there, becomes, uh, th there does come a time when we certainly have to take a, a very, very active role. But we have been told, and I have every reason to believe, that this is an active, ongoing investigation. There are still many things to be followed up, and that I have not lost confidence at this point in time. But I understand that there are those in the community and those in the media. Boulder is always in the crosshairs of the media, that there are those who have lost patience. But uh, I think it is a bit premature for me to suggest that uh, I have lost confidence. Chuck Green, you're one of the media sharpshooters. Uh, you want to explain why there has been a loss of patience in, in the media? And, and let's face it, it's easy for us to lose patience. We don't have any responsibility one way or the other for whether the investigation is properly conducted. Uh, but give me, your, uh, give me your read on it. Well, one of the reasons for criticism is uh, the contradictory statements that uh, authorities in Boulder have made themselves. The police chief recently reassigned two detectives from the Ramsey case because he said there wasn't enough uh, left to be done, that the case now was in the stage of reviewing the evidence they had collected. The district attorney said just a few days later that uh, new leads were being followed up and the investigation was very active. He has described as recently as yesterday the investigation being in its early stages. Um, their, their statements just, just don't line up properly. How does, uh, now I, I don't know who in the DA's department was responsible for it, but the, the flyer, the piece of information that went out suggesting that uh, there was a man on the loose who might be, uh, you know, a danger to young children, and the, and the DA's office approving that does seem to have been an incredibly amateurish and dumb act. Well, first of all, the mayor, when she saw it, said that uh, she thought it was a ploy by the Ramsey uh, family uh, to to uh, distract the investigation, maybe to earn the family some uh, public sympathy. Only two days later did the district attorney acknowledge that his office partly developed that statement. Now partly means, I think, that, that the DA developed this statement in concert with the Ramsey legal team. And so now here you have the prosecuting officer office working in concert to some extent with the primary suspects in the case. Mr. Greenlee, why have the officials of Boulder been so eager to go along with everything that is being recommended by the Ramsey's Council? Well, I don't know that they have uh, necessarily gone along with everything. There well, let's, been... let's take it step by step. For example, the handwriting analysis to show them to give them a copy of the, of the handwritten note at a time when they themselves are primary suspects seems just plain dumb. Well, 
that may be, and, and a postmortem of all of these matters, I'm sure, will occur because there is uh, enough awareness of, of some problems that may have gone on with regard to the initial phases of the investigation. But again, I caution you and everyone, it's still a bit early for us to make any final judgments on things. Absolutely, and, and I, I take your caution in the spirit in which you give it. Let me just ask you, at which point uh, is your patience going to run out? How much, how much time uh, is one prepared to give in an instance like this? After five months, most clues tend to be kind of cold, don't you think? Well, uh, perhaps so, but I think at the end of the day, Ted, what we are after is justice. We are after apprehending and prosecuting the perpetrator or those who committed this terrible crime. And in order to do that, in, in these days and times, it requires diligence. It requires perhaps going uh, that extra mile to make sure that the evidence that's collected, that things that are done are done properly and in sequence, because ultimately we want a conviction out of this case. Chuck Green, is that still possible? Well, it's very unlikely without a confession, and the longer this case drags on, the less likely a confession is. There's only one critical piece of evidence left outstanding in this case, and if that's not incriminating, I don't think the police have much to go on. My big overriding concern in the long run is that the, if there's not a trial in this case, the citizens of Boulder will never get a good look at what happened to this investigation. Mr. Green, Mr. Greenlee, thank you both very much indeed. I appreciate you joining us this evening. I'll be back in a moment. Who supplies the energy that's good for industry, good for the economy, and good for the environment? America's electric utility companies. They created electronic trading, and a global intranet became their trading floor. An intranet now able to handle a billion shares a day, with trades flashed to 300,000 monitors around the world in milliseconds. With reliability critical, with no room for error, who did NASDAQ turn to to build and manage the world's largest intranet? MCI. Imagine now what we can do for you. To you, it looks like this. To a car thief, it looks like this. And to our Ford Motor Company engineers, it looks like one of the most powerful anti-theft devices ever. Only this key sends an electronic code to the engine before it will ever start. So it looks like your new Taurus will be just where you parked it. Ford. Quality is job one. breakfast before you go out fishing? Uh, yeah, you know, I like to, yeah. Do you ever miss having breakfast in the morning? Uh, yeah, that happens. Uh-huh. <laughs> and if you did, would you maybe have it for lunch or dinner? Absolutely. How about IHOP's 3 dollars red, white, and blueberry breakfast? You get two buttermilk pancakes with strawberry, blueberry, and whipped topping, plus two eggs, bacon or sausage, and hash browns for $3.99. This is Cliff here by the Bay, reminding you that any time's a good time for breakfast at IHOP. John, we're talking a pancake breakfast that big. Oh, all right. Uh -huh. well, well, maybe that big. Oh. Well, you know. Sunday on this week, the latest on the Oklahoma City bombing trial and fallout from the Supreme Court's decision to allow the Paula Jones case against the president to go forward. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. Nightline has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. ABC News, now always on. When a player drops down on one knee at Muirfield, he's not reading the green. He's genuflecting.
The Memorial Tournament, sponsored by Dean Witter, Saturday on ABC. The Planet Rocks, the 97 World Music Awards, with the Fugees, Gloria Stefan, the Spice Girls, and more. The 97 World Music Awards, ABC Monday. Files on News 2. If you're planning a home building project right now, you need to come see the building specialist at 